NASA and a SpaceX customer have revealed plans to launch two separate moon missions next month, on different days. NASA confirmed on October the 12th that its Space Launch System rocket will roll out to its Kennedy Space Center LC-39A pad for the fourth time as early as November the 4th. Welcome to Tech Heaven, and in this video we'll take a look at why SpaceX and NASA are targeting separate moon launches days apart. Curious to know? Let's find out! The rocket's next launch attempt is scheduled for November the 14th at 12.07 am EDT. SLS will carry an uncrewed prototype of NASA's Orion crew capsule to the moon, where it will attempt to enter lunar orbit and conduct tests before returning to Earth. The same day, Japanese startup iSpace announced that its first commercial moon lander, Hakuto RM-1, will launch on a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket between November the 9th and 15th. While NASA has a $73 million contract with iSpace to develop a second-generation Series 2 moon lander in the US, the first-generation program has been almost entirely private. The first M1 lander will attempt to deliver two rovers, one built by Japan and one by the United Arab Emirates, as well as a number of commercial and government payloads to the moon's surface. Hakuto R is expected to weigh around 1050 kilograms at launch, with the capability of landing up to 30 kilograms of usable payload on the moon. The majority of the lander's structure was designed and built by iSpace, but Europe's Ariane Group was contracted to provide the propulsion system and fully assemble, integrate and test the lander in Germany. According to iSpace, Falcon 9 will launch Hakuto R into a supersynchronous Earth orbit, where the lander will test its systems before eventually thrusting itself free of Earth's gravity well and into the moons. A nominal transit from Earth orbit to the lunar surface is expected to take at least 20 days. The lander is designed to stay on the moon for up to 12 days, during which time it will attempt to run its onboard experiments, deploy both of its tiny rovers and transmit all data collected back to Earth. Initially, the startup described its contracts with SpaceX as contracts to launch two landers as secondary payloads on two Falcon 9 rockets. iSpace no longer specifies in its press releases whether the one-ton spacecraft will be the only payload on Falcon 9. The Hakuto RM-1 satellite could be a secondary payload on SpaceX's launch of the Eutelsat-10B geostationary communication satellite, which is currently scheduled for November the 11th. SpaceX will reportedly expend Falcon 9's reusable first-stage booster during the mission, allowing for significantly more performance. Since its inception in 2010, iSpace has raised approximately $210 million, coinciding with the year that the US Congress forced NASA to begin developing the SLS rocket. After 12 years, the first launches of SLS and Hakuto-R could happen within hours of each other. NASA's SLS rocket will be heading to the launch pad for the fourth time when it arrives next month. SLS and Orion have had a bumpy road to their first launch, suffering half a decade of delays and going tens of billions of dollars over budget. Once all of the components arrived at Florida, it took NASA and its contractors about a year to complete the assembly of SLS and Orion and begin testing the integrated rocket. SLS has undergone five publicized wet dress rehearsal tests since integrated testing began in April 2022, in April, June and September. It also attempted to launch twice, though both attempts were arguably nothing more than a continuation of wet dress rehearsal testing in all but name. However, when the rocket launches for the fourth time, NASA will have completed nearly all of the testing that it should have completed before declaring that its mega moon rocket was ready for launch back in August. The SLS launch will almost certainly take precedence over the other Cape Canaveral launch at the same time, including the Hakuto RM-1. But SpaceX could launch the moon lander roughly one day before or after NASA's moon rocket. By the way, if you're watching us for the first time, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you can enjoy our future videos while getting updated. Getting back to the topic? NASA aborted a launch attempt for the second time in a week, citing a stubborn fuel leak that the space agency said could delay the debut mission of its Moon-to-Mars Artemis program by at least several weeks. About three hours before the scheduled liftoff time for the 32-story tall Space Launch System rocket and its Orion capsule from Cape Canaveral, Florida, pre-flight operations were called off for the day. 
The uncrewed test flight aimed at launching the capsule to the moon and back was to have marked the first voyage of both the SLS and Orion, a half century after Apollo's last lunar mission, which served as the forerunner to the Artemis program. The countdown was cancelled after three failed attempts by Kennedy Space Center technicians to repair a large leak of supercooled liquid hydrogen propellant being pumped into the rocket's core stage fuel tanks, according to agency officials. The first launch attempt on Monday was also thwarted by technical issues. It included a different leaky fuel line, a faulty temperature sensor and cracks discovered in insulation foam. After the previous issues were resolved to their satisfaction, mission managers proceeded with a second launch attempt on Saturday. In the event that a third attempt was required, NASA had scheduled a backup launch for either Monday or Tuesday. However, after reviewing data from the latest problems, NASA determined that the new hydrogen leak was too difficult and time-consuming to troubleshoot and repair on the launch pad before the mission's current launch period expired on Tuesday. Launch day delays and malfunctions are common in the space industry, especially for new rockets like NASA's Space Launch System, a complex vehicle with a set of pre-liftoff procedures that have yet to be thoroughly tested and rehearsed by engineers. On any given day, the chances of a launch being cancelled for any reason, including bad weather, are about 1 in 3. The launch pad setbacks came at the end of a development program that had been in the works for more than a decade. With years of delays and billions of dollars in cost overruns under NASA's respective SLS and Orion contracts with Boeing Co. and Lockheed Martin Corp. Aside from the technical challenges, Artemis 1 marks a watershed moment in NASA's post-Apollo human spaceflight program, after decades of focusing on low Earth orbit with space shuttles and the International Space Station. Artemis, named after Apollo's twin sister in Greek mythology, aims to return astronauts to the Moon's surface as soon as 2025, though many experts believe the time frame will likely slip. From 1969 to 1972, 12 astronauts walked on the Moon during six Apollo missions, the only space flights to place humans on the lunar surface. However, Apollo, born of the Cold War space race between the United States and the Soviet Union, was less science-driven than Artemis. The new Moon program has enlisted commercial partners such as SpaceX and European, Canadian and Japanese space agencies to eventually establish a long-term lunar base of operations as a stepping stone to even more ambitious human voyages to Mars. The launch of the SLS Orion spacecraft is a critical first step. The spacecraft's first flight will put the 5.75 million pound vehicle through its spaces in a rigorous test flight pushing its design limits and aiming to prove the spacecraft's suitability for carrying astronauts. If the mission is successful, a crewed Artemis II flight around the Moon and back could occur as early as 2024, followed by the program's first lunar landing of astronauts, one of whom will be a woman with Artemis III in a few years. The SLS, billed as the most powerful and complex rocket in the world, represents NASA's largest new vertical launch system since the Saturn V of the Apollo era. Orion will carry a simulated crew of three, one male and two female mannequins, equipped with sensors to measure radiation levels and other stresses that real-life astronauts would face. And with that being said, it's time to end our video, but before that would like to know your opinion about this plan. Let us know in the comments. Like this video and make sure to subscribe to the channel for more amazing videos like this. We'll see you in the next video.